This is breaking news. Happening right now, the United Federation of Teachers president is holding a press conference to discuss safety measures as schools reopen. Let's go to going on with our children that we try to do everything in our power to maintain safety to keep our schools open. Uh, we are concerned today about staffing. Uh, we've seen throughout the metropolitan area for the last week that there's been high absenteeism in all industries. And I want to reiterate this. If people are sick, we do not want them coming to school. They're showing symptoms. We do not want them in school. But if you're fine, if you are fine, you, we, we want you to be in school. And you all understand that what the teachers have done throughout this pandemic, always walking into schools last year when there was no vaccine available, standing in front of their children, doing what needed to be done. All the children who we know were on remote. Remote was never a great solution, but it was a way for us as teachers and educators to teach to keep in contact with our students and engage with them. But whenever possible, especially here at the American Sign Language School, remote is not a great option at all. So I, again, I want to, I can't thank all of the teachers and the staffs that are coming into school today. For the parents, we need your children vaccinated. We need the vaccination rate to go up for our five to 11 year olds. We need consent forms for surveillance testing. If we all want to keep our school system open, then those are the things that we have to do. And we've done all of this by doing it together. So please, parents, get your children vaccinated and at the same time, give the schools consent on surveillance. These are the things that we know keep our schools the safest place in every community. So now we enter this phase, a new variant. Our schools, once again, are gonna face this challenge. And throughout this pandemic, when the schools are faced with this challenge, the schools are always the safest place in the community. And once again, we're gonna to try to reach that goal. And I have great faith in the teachers and the adults and the students because they've done it over and over again. So it's really important that everyone understands, we see what happens today with staffing. If we have operational closures, that means that there's not enough staff, then those things will happen. We had a lot of that happening before the break, but the more important thing here is we're all communicating with each other and we're being constructive about how to keep every school community safe. So I'd like to introduce um, the chapter leader, Michael Nappi of the American Sign Language School to talk about why it is so important, but at the same time, the challenges that every school is facing right now. Michael? Thank you. Michael, can you say and spell your name? Sure, uh, it's Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Nappi, N-A-P-P-I, um, and I am the UFT chapter leader for PS347. I am a teacher, I, uh, I'm a preschool teacher. So good morning, uh, on behalf of the staff here at PS347, um, I would like to say just a few words. Um, we here love being with our students. We love having them in person, um, as long as it's safe to do so. Um, it's been a struggle the past two years, uh, having our students remote, because when we're in person, our students have uh, adult and peer language models, which really help uh, their learning. Um, the safety of our community members is paramount, and we know that Without being able to feel safe, students aren't going to really engage in meaningful and thoughtful learning. So we take their safety seriously. Um, the increase in COVID testing that's happening now and the improvements to the mitigation protocols are, we think are a great step in the right direction. Um, and we just hope that those things continue to increase and improve as the year goes on. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And, and also we have the high school for the American Sign Language School is here, as well as a District 75 site. I will give you all a quick update. As of 1030 last night, we confirmed that every school was loaded up with their rapid test kits with their KN95 masks. Today we're monitoring staffing in each and every school building in New York City, as well as monitoring to make sure that the testing teams for the surveillance testing system are meeting the mandate that has been put before them. Those are the things that are going to be important to keep our school system safe. But again, this is going to be a very, very challenging week for the public school system of New York City. 
And we have to be there to support and thank all of the people that are doing the work, the teachers, the guidance counselors, the principals, the secretaries, the custodians. Those are the folks that are, make, are going to make this happen. And we want to, I want to personally thank the school facilities folks who worked throughout this entire holiday and especially through the New Year's weekend to make sure that over a million test kits were delivered to the schools as well as over a million KN95 masks were delivered to each and every school. So now I will take questions. Not at this point, where we, we uh, you know, the United, we, the union has a uh, uh, a situation room, set, uh, a rapid response room set up right now, as well as does the Department of Education in the city of New York. We've been all communicating uh, throughout the night and from five o'clock on this morning. So we are monitoring right now uh, all of the schools to see if there will be a staffing issue and possibility of some sort of a remote closure. They should expect to see their teachers there uh, wel welcoming them, but at the same time, uh, the guidelines that we have been following need to be followed even, you know, more stricter than before. We all understand that this, this variant is, is, a is more infectious than the previous ones. Uh, but so for parents, it should be, uh, you're, we welcome you, we want you there, but again, we want the vaccination rate up and we want the consent forms to make sure that we can do everything to keep your child safe and to keep this school open. Do you think consent forms are necessary or because it's kind of every day? Well, we, uh, we, would, we put that request in to the state, to the governor, and to the legislature. Those are the, that's the only two entities that have the authority to do it. So both the mayor and I have asked the state to do that for New York City. And we have been, t at this point, they have not granted that request. That's, uh, that, is a, uh, that is a strategy we have used in the past during this pandemic, but it really comes down to how many people we're talking about. There is, there basically becomes a tipping point when you start talking about 30% of a staff uh, uh, absenteeism, then we have to look at the safety of the school. But that also comes down to student attendance. So there's not a, a, a one size fits all answer here. You have to look at student attendance in the building as well as the staffing. Uh, attendance. But again, we've been very clear. We don't want people coming to schools if they are showing symptoms or if they have had a positive rapid test or any other test. We do not want them coming to the schools. Michael, there's been some, some talk of sick outs sporadically. You've warned against that in the past. Are there any circumstances under which you support a kind of larger job action? And what's your message to people considering doing that? If the city does not do its job and hold up its end of what it's responsible for during this pandemic. If the schools were not loaded with all of their equipment at 1030 last night, we would have taken a different position. But they were loaded. You know, so it comes down to we listen to our doctors. We have independent doctors, independent from the city and independent from us. And they tell us what should be happening. And what they've asked for in the schools is something the school system has now set up. The next thing we monitor is the testing and the what is known as the um, is the room the situation room where all of the information gets processed we know we've uh, now have more testing teams than ever before that was built during the holiday and the situation room has now more personnel than it's ever had before if those things weren't in place we would be looking at a situation of going to court and talking about safety but if our doctors are telling us that's what we need and it's there we move forward the safety issue right now though is staffing don't know. We do not know. And again, it comes down to a school by school basis. But if the entire system has a large number of people who are out, then we would have to look at the entire system having to go to a remote situation. Can, can you elaborate? Because I, I don't think we've heard before this idea that only the state would be the one who could force testing consent. We've heard right. that without a remote option, it becomes a little dubious to force parents to do that. But where is this idea that the state if we do not have a remote option, then the state is the only one that can mandate the testing. Because as long as there's a remote option, we are offering the child their education, okay? So without a remote option, we cannot. 
That is the law. It's a very simple. In New York State, you can mandate vaccines for adults if you're a Department of Health, a local Department of Health. You cannot mandate vaccines for children. Only the state can do that. Everything, once it's children, it's only the state can do actual mandates. So we were able to mandate testing last year because they had a remote option. Because without the remote option, we can't mandate the testing. Only the state can do it. It was yesterday was a very frustrating day. Yesterday was extremely frustrating because we saw what happened at the testing sites. They were dealing with staffing issues. There were very long lines. The testing sites themselves were dealing with uh, staffing issues. That's why it was so frustrating. We, you know, and you know, today every teacher in New York City who goes to a school will get the the rapid tests kits to for them to take home. So now they have that and the surveillance testing system starts today also. So 10% of each school where that is tested today, 10% of the teachers who wish to be tested will be able to get that done. But it's very, it's very frustrating. And look, the teachers have had a very difficult time trusting uh, government. Let's just put it that way. So we now have a new mayor. We'll see where that goes. Right before the break, the teachers heard every day how there was plenty of substitutes and the Situation Room was working. And every teacher in New York City knew that was not true. So now we try to work with this administration and we'll see what happens over the next couple of days. Okay, let's wrap it up. Yeah, it's not, we can have a personal conversation on this. All right, are there any more questions over here? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.